UFO conspiracy theorist for years and has come away a non-believer. I always probe pretty hard. What kinds of evidence do you have to support this? I have yet to see any. But these veterans insist they have actually seen the proof with their own eyes. Even if they can't say for sure who or what may actually be out there. Your guess is as good as mine, and I can't answer that question. In Washington, Tom Fitzgerald, Fox 5 News. It is news to many that the United Nations even has an office for outer space affairs, which is in fact responsible for promoting international cooperation in the peaceful uses of outer space. Joining me now is author and journalist Nick Pope, who used to run the British government's UFO project, UFO project at the Ministry of Defence. Thanks so much for joining us. I presume you thought this story was ridiculous from the start. Well, it's half true, you know. The Royal Society had a discussion meeting earlier this year called The Detection of Extraterrestrial Life and the Consequences for Science and Society. And one of the questions asked was, who speaks for planet Earth? And Dr. Othman uh, simply said, well, look, maybe the UN Office for Outer Space Affairs should have a role in that. Which would mean her. Uh, it would mean her. So I think what, what was an intriguing possibility in the mind's eye of the media became a certain but uh, scientists are thinking about these sorts of issues. If we pick up a signal, do we reply? If we reply, what should we say? Who replies? Uh, well, people are looking for signals uh, using radio telescopes. Yes. If we find one, one, one of the big issues, and Stephen Hawking has talked about this recently. The Cambridge is, professor. It absolutely, has said, well, maybe we shouldn't reply at all because uh, look what happened when, when um, the European mm. explorers encountered the Native Americans. Didn't come off too well for the Native Americans. But all these issues now, the scientific community are beginning to think about this and I think that's interesting. And is the information and uh, the research coordinated in a way that if a signal did come through you'd all be discussing it and you would perhaps put together some sort of response and decide who it would be. Is there any sort of setup or any committee of any kind? Well the search for extraterrestrial intelligence have something called the, um, uh, the, the declaration protocols, which is really more about verification than anything else. But these issues, these next step issues, should we reply, what should we say, uh, the Royal Society are going to be discussing that at their meeting next week, which I'm going to be attending. Okay, and uh, just to uh, give us a bit more background about your experience in this, you were in charge of all of this, effectively, for the British government. Um, you came to the conclusion eventually, from an impartial point of view, that there are UFOs likely to come or have come? Well, I'm not sure about that. I convinced... You couldn't write off some of the uh, examples. I, I couldn't write... Exactly. The, poli <laughs> the politician's answer. I'm yes. convinced there's life out there. Not sure if we're being visited, but some of the UFO sightings that we investigated, uh, we couldn't explain in conventional terms. Okay, and so... If you had enough resources at the time, how much more would you have researched that and what do you think your conclusion might have been? Uh, well, I don't think there's a manager anywhere in, in uh, the civil service who wouldn't say, please, can I have more resources yeah. if, if available. Uh, I would have liked to have um, obviously hooked up much more with the astronomical community. And it's interesting, the Royal Society, when it's discussing this, brings together a multidisciplinary group of, of um, physicists, cosmologists, but even theologians, uh, social scientists. People are talking about the religious implications of this even. Okay, so uh, when the Royal Society does meet and um, discuss it a bit further, do you think there is a, a will within the scientific theological communities, as it were, for, to, to have some sort of representative? It would be the UN, wouldn't it? it? It probably would have to be the UN. I don't think it could be a political leader. Uh, it couldn't be a religious figure. It would have to be someone who could genuinely say, I speak for the people of this planet. And, and the UN is probably it, which is, which is where we come back uh, to, to Dr. Othman, and maybe she is the right choice after all. Who's fighting it? There must be someone fighting it. This is politics after all. Well, I don't know. Maybe one of her colleagues uh, was a little bit over-enthusiastic about um, translating this spectrum speculation uh, that, that the UN Office of Outer Space Affairs might have a role into a certainty. I don't yeah. know. Promoting the department. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thanks very much. That's great. What a lot of people are looking up is because of a mystery in the sky. Is it a balloon, a UFO? Whatever it is, it sure has a lot of people talking. I would assume reporter Jeff Begay is live in Chelsea where crowds have gathered. Jeff, what's this all about? 
Well, Sade, we don't know, quite honestly. And when I got this assignment, I thought for sure somebody in the newsroom was joking. And it wasn't until we pulled up to this corner and saw the passers-by looking up that we realized that, okay, maybe there is something in the sky today. Oh, oh, oh snap. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, you got it? It's a bird. It's a plane. It's uh Maybe uh -huh. Superman. Maybe, maybe Wonder Woman. You'd rather it be Wonder Woman. Yeah. Though. There is something up there, and there's been a crowd of people at the corner of 8th and 23rd Street trying to figure out exactly what it is. I think I see it now. There's right over there. Right there. Wait, there's another one over here? I just see. I saw. I see those two over there. Earlier today, it was over here. I think it's a balloon. I don't know. You think it's a balloon? Yeah. All right. But then again, balloons don't stand still. Maybe we're not all just seeing things. The city is reporting that they've been getting calls about this mystery in the sky to their 311 line. So far, they don't have an answer. What is that? To that question either. Well, what do you think it is? I don't know. <laughs> you don't want to say I'm it. looking for the mothership. <laughs> Did she find it? Well, still a mystery. We don't know. We did make some calls, and we uh, found out from the FAA that their planes aren't being affected by these white lights. Not that that answers the question. So it remains a mystery. Everybody out here seems to have an opinion on it. I was told that there have been some people out here just standing around looking up for about 45 minutes trying to figure it out. We're live in Chelsea. Jeff Pegues, Channel 7 Eyewitness News. Yeah. Crowds in New York have had their eyes to the skies in an alleged UFO sighting. Dozens of videos posted online show passersby seemingly staring at a group of unidentified flying objects in the sky over Manhattan. Adding mystery to the event is a prediction by a retired air defense officer. In a recent book, he claimed that on October 13th, the day of the sighting, of course, a fleet of UFOs would hover over the world's principal cities. Well, many witnesses insist that's indeed what they were seeing. Uh, alien spaceships, while others say it looked more like a group of hot air balloons.
what is it? What we're looking at? Balloons? Who has binoculars? Can I see them? I can't see. Did you get a close up? Did you film it this morning? This morning was crazy. Yeah. Five, six, seven. Five, six. Five, six. Five, six. I see I see one all the way up above here. See it? I don't know. That's what we're here tonight. It's no, it's a weather one. That's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> Who has a Zoom? <laughs> <laughs> 